Welcome to Visconia. During a trip to Egypt recently, we've uh, had the chance to talk to some local Egyptian people uh, about the revolution. But we try not to be very creepy to to as if we were trying to dig out too much information from them. But today we have the honor to have Salah Saudi with us uh, from Egypt to give us really a. Uh, a native perspective about the revolution that just took place in Egypt and uh, arguably ended. So we're trying to understand really how it happened and we were trying to understand the implication that it has, especially with the current situation in the country. So Salah, can you say something about yourself and also why we why we should listen to you? Uh, so, um, hello, hi. Um, um, uh, I'm Salah, I'm a um, third year sociology student at um, just finished uh, Sussex and I'm from Alexandria, Egypt, which is the um, second biggest city um, after Cairo in Egypt and it was a major um, also center of protests and mm -hmm. strikes and civil disobedience and stuff happened when the revolution started in January 2011 mm -hmm. and uh, I was there back in uh, 2011 um, but I left in September. But you were, uh, you were in involved? Here. Uh, yes, I was. Country. Yeah, I was involved in the pro in the protest when they began on January twenty eleven, twenty fifth okay. until yeah, the eighteen days up till Mubarak um, was ousted, and afterwards in uh, protest against the military council is cut. So my first question for you would be: uh, Do do you think revolutionist word captures the the picture? Well, in the moment mm -hmm. you. It was definitely a revolution. Like mm -hmm. there was so many people, masses, uh, people. A lot of mobilization mm -hmm. on the street. Everyone's talking about what's happening on the street. Everyone's, the political establishment is concerned and um, responded in violent ways to the protest. So uh, and no, definitely, and the country came to a stop. So I think yeah, it's definitely like um, a revolution, or like an uprising that's happened. Uh, okay that is very angry at the status quo. Okay, because really for the definition of revolution we've mm -hmm. learned it's basically uh, an attempt to, to overthrow mm -hmm. the current setup and now I'm thinking probably that's at least an attempt what the Egyptian people was mm -hmm. trying to do, was trying to really reconfigure it, mm -hmm. the, 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 the country, the society. So it was a revolution. Um, okay. Yeah, well now, if we look, mm -hmm. if we look at it, um, like there was a, a, a change in the political um, scene mm -hmm. in sort of like the yeah. Mubarak was yeah. arrested, and then the military took power directly yeah. uh, afterwards, and then Muslim Brotherhood won the elections and took the presidency and okay. uh, most of the parliament. Um, so that was the change. Like the change okay. changes did happen. But okay. I think these were more like uh, very on the top, uh, on the top, like the real power didn't really change the because visible. it's still, yeah, okay. it was only like visible change. Well, that's okay. We we're, we're going to cover the success of the, okay. of the revolution, the Egyptian yeah. event later. And my next question would be uh, Arab Spring. What's your take about this term? Um, Arab Spring, well, Arab Spring, I'm not really a fan of this term, mm. <laughs> um, because, uh, I don't know, like, spring, and it makes it seem a bit, like, flowery and rosy, and mm -hmm. it's, uh, revolutions are, or these sort of movements are very messy and bloody, and, um, uh, the, mm -hmm. it's not like a spring, um, I wouldn't describe it as a spring, maybe there is, like, later on, I don't know the results of it now, I wouldn't even say if, like, you know, some people mm -hmm. say that our spring has failed or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't like these, like, conclusions and okay. um, terms. Um. Uh, really, the reason why I'm asking this question, because I personally feel actually a spring to some certain group of people's eye, it might seem like a good thing. Okay, mm -hmm. they are changing. But then I'm thinking for the, for the people involved in this, they might not really feel and also actually uh, I think what, what the trajectory of this thing where it's pointing mm -hmm. might not be as sweet as rosy to, yeah. to their eyes.
And really, for the for the for the cause of this 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 revolution, what what went wrong? What was the problem? What what was really responsible for 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 this mess? Um, so yeah, yeah, there's a lot of reasons why. Um, it's due to uh, corruption, main corru- ones. corruption, poverty, um, exclusion from the decision making, from uh, lack of a democratic system, mm-hmm. um, uh, political like violence, uh, torture, um, mm-hmm. political repression, and all these things, and yeah, socio-economic reasons. And we were really. talking about whose governments, whose administration. Um, this is the Mubarak regime. Basically, it was was made first aimed at at the mm-hmm. Mubarak regime, and yeah, uh, first for the um, for that was like a, a that was a direct um, uh, yeah like yeah. Well, the slogan was bread, uh, bread, freedom, social justice. That was the chant for the revolution. Well, but for me, like I was I'm sort of um, I was in a privileged position. So I w- come from like sort of a middle class background. So mm-hmm. I was, um, I had like food on the table and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but we did want to call for a democratic system. Um, okay. But obviously, this was more about like being in solidarity with everyone. Everyone mm-hmm. was in solidarity, united against mm-hmm. this regime that is uh, that has increased inequality, increased mm-hmm. um, poverty, and so the um, the people in Egypt, working class, mm-hmm. and uh, they had a huge role, um, so I wouldn't just, um, like, yeah, this revolution yeah. was mainly for the majority of Egyptians yeah, who yeah. are poor. Okay. Um, this is very interesting, because um, I'm sorry I'm, I'm dragging every topic to China, but really, right now, there's also a, 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 a visible formation of a upper class party. A group of people in China, and also they were they were calling for democracy. They were calling for uh, more space to to move around. I'm thinking probably that's also a very good mm-hmm. hint for, yeah. for 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 the for the for the privileged people. They were. I'm thinking probably it's not really poverty. There are many reasons for people to to really ask for for a change, and uh, whether this is going to lead to anywhere good mm-hmm. or bad that's 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 remain a yeah. question i mentioned listening to uh, the local people's opinion really when when i when i was in cairo and also other other parts in egypt mm-hmm. and what i heard was a kind of disappointment mm-hmm. about the current situation although mm-hmm. there were changes there uh, something did happen and mm-hmm. uh, i'm thinking probably this might not be the universal uh, general feeling but I think to a large extent this is what I observed do you have something mm-hmm. to say about this um, well I think it will differ to who you ask so if you ask me mm-hmm. um, as a person who was deeply involved in this sort of change and wanted to see change actually happen mm-hmm. uh, I was very disappointed frustrated exhausted and mm-hmm. angry still <laughs> mm-hmm. at the situation and then feel more helpless now because there's a ca- now is nothing short of a counter revolution taking place mm-hmm. punishing all of the people who all of the people who united and were divided later on and now is basically the re- current regime is and this is already pun- under punishment. Sisi Un- yeah well yeah so his uh, islamists are being targeted in in prison, mm-hmm. uh, leftists are being targeted and thrown in prison, secularists, um, and yeah, the, uh, now the death sentences coming out against people from uh, Muslim Brotherhood or uh, and others, like the death sentences are being like hundreds and hundreds mm-hmm. of death sentences given out in the p- during the past few years since um, uh, CC um, um, was, well, okay. brought to power. Um, would, would, this, would this statement be justified, what do you think? The uh, old king is killed and now the mm-hmm. new one is not better than the old um, Well, yeah, well, it's even, it's, um, situation is very repressive now. Um, when we saw a period of more like um, opening of ideas and people mm-hmm. discussions and political stuff, 
and a lot of instability and stuff. People got tired of that. Is this a rollback? Yeah. Well, the people wanted sort of stability because the stability wasn't mm-hmm. coming, and the economy was the complete the economy is in complete like horrible state. Um, so um, can't really blame them. So and some people are happy with um, CC. Uh, mm-hmm. So if you ask, or uh, some people uh, support Morsi and want him back. So if you ask different Egyptians, they will tell you different things. And like I don't mm-hmm. speak on behalf of all of them, but for me, I'm definitely not happy with this because I see it as the same regime and mm-hmm. even worse yeah. now. Okay. Um, I hate to use this term, but I I think for the for the majority of the people I, that I talk to, mm-hmm. were really from a lower class. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking probably they were they were really the the grievance was real. Mm-hmm. So okay, what do you think? It's really responsible for what we have now. What why it didn't work? Um, well, it didn't. Well, sort of didn't work for now. I like mm-hmm. f- to say for now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah because these things take a lot of time and development. This is historical stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, it takes time. And but for now it didn't work because people um, were were just didn't unite. They weren't uniting to mm-hmm. write a constitution to try to set up a, a democratic system properly with the elections and then respecting the democratic process. Mm-hmm. So people were quick to protest and protest because they found. Uh, Sometimes mm-hmm. they often didn't find any other avenue mm-hmm. platform to portray, like to convey their message, or um, that they're not happy with the situation mm-hmm. or with the transitional period. So the protest it was just um, polarized a lot mm-hmm. and, uh, and fragmented. Yeah, so it was just polarized. And um, who wants this state, uh, civil state, uh, Islamic mm-hmm. state? What do, sort of state do we want? Constitution do we want? And a lot of time was. Um, Sadly, yeah, a, a lot of divisions and polarizations that was not very helpful, and it could have been done much better. Any but suggestions and future perspectives? Um, well, for the future, I don't, I don't really know how to for, like to foresee, but I can't really foresee mm-hmm. anything. But um, I hope, I hope that we have learned from the past, mm-hmm. and it will set an example. Like this will be. Uh, Everything like happens from history. We should we should sort of learn from it. So mm-hmm. I hope in the future this it will work. What kind of implication this uh, Egyptian revolution bear? Does it hold any? Does it does it point at any any direction um, for the for the border region in the Middle East? Let's say. I think yeah. I think um, the whole region is already sort of connected with like ling- like linguistically like with the language mm-hmm. we speak the same language so there's and the cultures have like similarities and differences mm-hmm. but the thing is like uh, when it started in Tunisia it affected Egypt we were inspired and then um, mm-hmm. so it's sort of this domino effect that happened in the region that sort of inspired so whenever it happened somewhere people were very inspired that mm-hmm. um, you know people in the neighboring country revolted mm-hmm. so it made them also uh, uh, like take action so uh, and i think um the whole region uh, with tunisia now is doing much better than egypt and mm-hmm. other sort of other countries like syria and what's happened in iraq and um and libya also so i think yeah there's definitely implications uh, but also do you see a link between this and ISIS? ISIS. Um, well, yeah, ISIS is now al- into has been like incorporated into the uh, the discussions in Egypt about um, when the people call for any change. Now the sort of the ISIS, uh, you know, um, this topic comes in. That's like if you mm-hmm. have to, you have to accept this regime. Or you know, ISIS will take over. Or do you want ISIS to? Because this is the only alternative. So we're stuck between okay. like extremists, or with um, like military re- repressive regimes, mm. and and they're just uh, we're just stuck in this sort of like you know dichotomy between the religious extreme and the se- like the military. Okay. Um, some would say like secular government that is quite repressive. 
but okay. yeah um, and it's just we should get out of this you know mm-hmm. just to do, you, do you see a role that has been played with neoliberalism uh, uh, neo- in in this in this situation because this is really what I'm very interested in um, I think yeah definitely all of the weapons all of the supplies of the tear gas and all of this stuff is supplied um, a lot of it I mean is supplied from other countries Egypt doesn't really produce like um, tear gas and stuff it's all like American and uh, from uh, Western countries and other uh, countries so all of this is money so mm-hmm. this is capital for other countries for companies mm-hmm. um, abroad who don't really <laughs> there's not really like super like um, regulation about how this is used against people uh, okay. peaceful protests against uh, people elsewhere where sh- uh, violations of human rights occur um, and also the inequality in Egypt w- um, given by the neoliberal policies of the Mubarak mm-hmm. regime of the Sam Sadat and onwards to even on like uh, successive governments have continued to benefit um, to put you know the money before people the majority of people working class and stuff and um, try to invest like all these talk about investments and stuff to get more money in and without really talking about how this money or worth is distributed or benefits the masses so that was really really interesting because uh, this is actually also the general tone I've uh, I've learned actually when I was in Egypt that the system is really powerful it's like uh, it's really difficult to break from it but as we always say the world is changing day by day in Bisconia we hope our knowledge can help you get prepared for a different tomorrow thanks for watching we'll see you next time